Welcome back to the next part of our lesson on how to prepare solutions from a stock file or ampule. We ended off answering question number one and in question number two we have the following scenario. Folic acid is available from the manufacturer in a 5 milligram per milliliter injection. That's the concentration of the stock solution. Prepare one ounce of 25 milli equivalents per milliliter oral solution. How much folic acid solution is required? Let's begin by writing down the formula that we started off with in the first part of the video, which is Q1C1 is equal to Q2C2. The left side of the equation represents the quantity and concentration of the stock solution, and the right side of the equation represents the solution that we're preparing, its quantity and concentration. Now, according to the label, the folic acid comes in a concentration of 5 milligrams per milliliter. So this concentration is a weight per volume. And just be mindful of the units because the units that they want you to prepare are in ounces. And here we have milli equivalents, which is completely different than milligrams. What I would recommend in a situation like this is to convert the ounces into the same unit. That's a unit of volume, by the way, and it's an imperial unit convert that into milliliters. Find out how many milliliters make one ounce. And the correct conversion is that for every one ounce, there are 30 milliliters. So we have one ounce, that's what they want us to prepare, and we want to convert this into milliliters. The conversion factor is for every 30 milliliters, we get one ounce. So essentially, they want us to prepare 30 milliliters. If you multiply this out, you end up with 30 milliliters. That value can be substituted in for Q2. Now, here we have a concentration that is in MEQ per milliliter, and the manufacturer has it rated as MG per milliliter. You have one of two options. Either you make five milligrams per milliliter into milli equivalents per milliliter so that it matches the units here, or convert milli equivalents per milliliter into milligrams per milliliter. It's ultimately up to you, but you have to do this before substituting these values into C2 and C1. What I will do is convert 25 milli equivalents per one milliliter into milligrams per milliliter. And the conversion ratio goes like this. For every 1,000 milli equivalents, you get one milligram. So, notice how this unit and that unit cancel out, leaving us with milligrams per milliliter. 25 over 1,000, or 25 milligrams per 1,000 milliliters. And this reduces down to 1 over 40, and 1 over 40, as a decimal, is 0 0.025. 0.025 milligrams per milliliter. This value will be substituted in for C2. And notice that the units match the manufacturer. So I'll plug that value as well in for C1. Let's see what we get. 5 milligrams per milliliter, that's C1. Q1 is unknown, that's what we're looking for. 30 milliliters gets placed in for Q2, and for C2, we just discovered is 0 0.025 milligrams per milliliter. All right, so using our calculator, the value on our screen times 30, that's the right side of the equation, 3 over 4 is equivalent to 0 0.75, and Notice how the units cancel out, so you can write this down as milligrams. And on the left side, we still have the same expression. To isolate for Q sub 1, we divide both sides by 5 milligrams per milliliter. That and that cancel out. Then these units cancel out, and we take the value on our screen, that's 0 0.75, and we divide it by 5 which gives us 0 0.15 milliliters. 0 0.15 milliliters of the stock folic acid is required to make 
a solution that's one ounce with a concentration of 25 milliequivalents per milliliter. This value right here is Q1. And just as before, you can easily find the amount of active ingredient of the stock solution by taking this volume and multiplying it to its concentration, and you would find out the weight of the active ingredient. In question number three, hydrocortisone is available in a vial of 100 milligrams in two milliliters. You are to prepare 24 milliliters of a five milligram per milliliter hydrocortisone dilution using the available stock vials. How much hydrocortisone in milliliters and how much dilutant in milliliters will you need? So we haven't been told directly in question number one its concentration, but we are told the volume and the weight. So we have 100 milligrams per every two milliliters. That's a concentration, that's a weight per volume. And it reduces down to 50 milligrams per milliliter. So we don't know the quantity of the stock solution. That's what we're looking for. Q1, C1 is equal to Q2, C2. The concentration of the stock solution is 50 milligrams per milliliter. And they want us to prepare 24 milliliters. So that's the quantity of the final solution, which will replace Q2. And its concentration is five milligrams per milliliter. And I should also write down the units for 24. It is milliliter. Notice how the units cancel out. We will multiply 24 and five together. We get 120, 120 Q1, 50 mg per ml. And I'll divide both sides by 50 so I can isolate for Q1. So 120 mg per 50 mg per one milliliter. This unit and that unit cancel out. Dividing 120 by 50 gives us a value of 2.4. So that's how much of the stock solution we have, 2.4 milliliters at a concentration of 50 milligrams per milliliter. Now remember, they want us to prepare 24 milliliters, and this is only 2.4 milliliters. So we need to add dilutant so that it reaches 24 milliliters. To calculate that, you take the amount that you want, which is 24, and subtract it by 2.4. There's a difference of 21.6. So you'll take 2.4 milliliters at a concentration of 50 milligrams per milliliter and you will add 21.6 milliliters of dilutant to that to get a final solution that is 24 milliliters and has a concentration of five milligrams per milliliter. If you have any questions about these two solutions or in question number one solution, feel free to use the comment section below or our website, which is written in the description of this video. We hope to see you again and thank you for watching.